Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to start off by giving you an update on the brick patio. I know we started off our recent, our most recent garden tour right here in this area, but they are almost done. And so I wanted to show you the direction we decided to go with the bricks and kind of how the traffic flow is going to go, we hope. I just set this arbor out, it's not in place yet, so it's a little wonky, uh, but I wanted to give you guys a, an idea of the feel for this area. And then we're gonna go out and plant some containers, maybe a couple things in the ground, and we may even head down to the garden center. I have no idea what today is gonna to hold, but I do know I wanted to give you an update on this space. So you know we were struggling trying to figure out how to marry these two areas together because they sit apart from each other. The brick sidewalk goes further this way than the brick patio. So we have two different lines here. And we decided that we're going to go ahead and bring the winter gem boxwoods. You can see how they stop right there. We're going to bring them all the way over here to this arbor and then they'll pick up again on this side but having an arbor here i think arbors just indicate like a formal entryway and i think arbors kind of pull they pull me through i want to walk under arbors you know so by having something like this here i happen to have this one in the barn do you need some help baby oh she's trying to haul bricks around on the lawnmower Anyway, this one is from Gardener Supply. They sent this out probably, I don't know, one or two years ago, and I just didn't have a spot to put it yet. And this might be the one that ends up here. We needed one five foot. That's how wide the walkway is. And we decided to go with straight all the way to this area and then straight over to this space right here and then into the brick patio area, kind of creating more of a destination spot here. The thing that we were struggling with in marrying these two areas is, you know, do we create something right here where it, you know, definitely is easier traffic flow wise to get from here to there, or do we want it to make it more of a room, more of a destination? And I think by doing this right here, it really makes it feel more formal. It makes it feel like you could go either way. Um, and then right here, we will have more boxwood. So the whole thing will be hedged in. So the boxwoods will start here, they'll go straight, over to this area, they'll take off and they'll, they'll go over this way. So in the corners where it swoops in, the boxwoods will actually come to a point. So the boxwoods will be a square. And then this area, we haven't decided if we're gonna do an in-ground planted, like boxwood cone or a U cone, or if we're gonna put four big giant containers, you know, one in every corner. But I am just so thrilled by how this is coming together because this was, I usually have sort of an idea of what I want and I just could not quite figure it out. Uh, and Aaron, let's switch spots again real quick. I love the bench right here. And I don't know if this is something we're gonna leave here, but when you're standing in the area, like in the gravel area, looking under the arbor, it's kind of peaceful to see somewhere. This is not at all level. In fact, I have a rock popping one of the legs up, but it would be kind of nice to have this shaded little area where you could stop and take a seat or whatever. Uh, also, the other nice thing about this traffic pattern is our hose is right here and it's the hose that feeds this area. So if we would have done the original idea of just kind of swooping the sidewalk in, we would have had to pull the hose over whatever ended up in this flower bed area. That's what it was gonna be. And now we can pull the hose. Well, watch, I'll do it. We can grab the hose and we can pull it straight out into the area where we need it without raking it over a bunch of stuff, which is awesome. Now, the last thing in this space that I don't know about, and I don't even think we've really talked through it, Aaron and I, is where to end this rock wall. So this is where we stopped last fall. It's clearly higher, so we're gonna have to continue on with it, but do we you know, build this up and have this whole area raised with the rock wall lining the whole thing? Or do we swoop it in and have this be more of like a triangular shaped bed. I don't know if you guys have any suggestions there. Uh, we do want to mask this stuff from the view Aaron is standing at right, right now. So anyway, I'm just so thrilled with this whole space, so excited about it. So anyway, that's that. And here's a view from backed up, kind of closer to the Hartley area. We're actually going to be planting up these containers here in just a second. Oh, that makes me just want to get that arbor staked into the ground and get something planted on it. Because can you imagine having some beautiful roses blooming on it or something like that? Oh, I think it's just going to be so pretty. And just seeing this whole area start to come together a little bit more. Uh, it's just, it's a very satisfying thing. I see a cart coming out from behind the truck. What you doing, Benjamin? 
pulling some wood. Benjamin has been really into making plant stands and the other day he made when when we were making Monica's raised beds I had you know the salvage ends of the boards and I'd give him all of those and uh, he was making bridges for his cars to ride on and making towers it's just so fun to see what his brain comes up with I have no idea what he's actually hauling around or what he's gonna go get <laughs> and Samantha is currently on the gator I usually carry around a mirror and like chapstick just to make sure my face isn't, you know, completely dirty when I get ready to talk to you guys on the camera. Right now she's playing with that stuff. Oh, looking good, baby girl. Do your lips feel hydrated? Hydrated. hydrated. Are you gonna do some mowing now? No. No, are you done with your mowing? Done with mowing. Do you wanna help me with some flowers? Okay, so the flowers we're gonna be planting in these urns are ones that we started from seed. Two varieties that I've actually never grown before ever, either from seed or from plants. One is called Joey's Tail, Joey's, Joey Lamb's Tail, and it's the last name is spelled P-T-I-L-O-T-U-S, I think, Lotus, something like that. Anyway, they uh, grow like 16 to 18 inches tall and create really big fuzzy pink, silvery pink plumes on the top, flower plumes. So these are looking fairly small at the moment. I'm going to put three of these in the center of each one of those urns. And then we have a flat of this gorgeous flower. This is Sibella Car Carmine, Carmine uh, Silene. <laughs> so I don't know. I bought both of the seeds from Swallowtail Garden uh, when I ordered all of my uh, geranium seeds. And I just thought these would be kind of fun to try. And the uh, description on this one, they're a spreading plant, like a trailing plant. And it says in the description that they are really good for hanging baskets and things like that. I thought these low urns, it'd be kind of a fun thing to try. I've got 24 of them here and I think I am gonna pack the containers out just cause I don't know how these, I mean, they look like they're gonna perform really well. They're already big. I'm gonna have to groom them too. They've been in their seed trays too long. Yeah, so it looks like I'll have to groom off lower leaves. But other than that, I mean, that's a pretty nicely branched plant. There's blooms and buds. I just don't know how thick to expect these to get. So I thought I would just split them in half and do 12 in each container. <laughs> Might be way too much, but this is an experiment. I'm gonna grab a little bit of potting soil. I need to top these up, but they already have a drip system running to them that's already hooked up. Um, so we should be good there. Okay, oh, it's heavy. You wanna help me lift that to the Hartley? Oh yeah, we're not gonna have to add too much in here at all. But I think that the bright pink and the lighter pink of the Joey's lamb's tail will look pretty with the containers we already have going here. And then of course the Bordeaux back here. Everything goes with Bordeaux. Okay, so let's get these planted up and then I'll show you how they look. Benny's crew just showed up to start working on leveling all the bricks up and uh, they're going to start the concrete barrier around all of the bricks to keep them all in place. So it's a little loud. I think we'll go work on another project and then we'll come back and look at these containers. <laughs> Samantha's getting strawberries. Do you want to go pick some? The strawberries are just loaded right now. I mean, I'm picking huge bowls every day. Gorgeous. That looks like a really good one. Did you get some strawberries, babe? Yeah? Mm-hmm. That one good? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Before we run and grab some plants to put in, I want to plant those two wicker pots right at our front entryway. Last year, they were the ones we did the Misty Seas combination that had the Blue Mohawk Junkus, and then they were it was surrounded by the Supertunia Mini Vistas, uh, Indigo, White, and Violet Star. They were gorgeous, I loved them. But I need to run drip to one of these big pots. This one right here. When we did the new irrigation for the rose garden, which everything's looking really good and there's a little bit of color. Anyway, when we ran that irrigation, uh, we 
did not run drip up to this pot clearly. This one has drip right here, and I think it's functioning pretty well at the moment. Yeah, everything's just feeling nice. Of course, everything is feeling good right now. We got a ton of rain yesterday, a ton of it. I brought all of our goodies out here to do this. So I've got our quarter inch, just solid black poly. We'll cut a line of this first that runs from our half inch drip line and it'll just run right up the back side. And then I'll use a straight coupler and attach to the actual drip tube. So it looks kind of the same right here, except for along the way, you'll see little holes, which are, are the emitters. And then I'll cut a length of that and then we'll use a plug at the end. Okay, so that is done. I wish I could run this one up underneath the containers, but these containers are just beastly. <laughs> I don't know how we would get that done. And this works out, at least the tubing matches the color of the pot. So it comes up here, there's a quarter inch coupler, then the drip tube runs around along the base of each one of these plants. It swings around the centerpiece plant and then a little quarter inch plug right there. That should work. It's all those little details that I'm trying to be better at remembering because it does make your life so much easier when you think, oh, it just takes me a minute, you know, a minute every day to come out here and water this pot. Will you add that up over the course of the summer when it just takes you a couple minutes to set up drip? So much better to do the work in the beginning and then enjoy it for the rest of the season. <laughs> now let's go grab some plants for those wicker pots. Kids look like they're still harvesting strawberries over there. Let's go get uh, geraniums out of the greenhouse. Oh, Benjamin, I'm gonna love this. I think you picked out some good ones. Benjamin, do you wanna do bright pink? Yeah, light, bright pink. Bright pink? Okay, so we need to get Can six of these. There's three. Okay, let's take these to the gator. They're ready to rock. Okay, well, Benjamin and I grabbed the flowers and then I realized how close we are to Samantha's nap time, which is very important. She still takes a very long nap, so we uh, make sure to work things kind of around that. So we decided to load up. We're gonna head down to the garden center and get our boxwoods for the patio area before it gets too late. So Aaron's backing in. We were getting to a point where we were using a trailer or needing a trailer just enough to where it felt like, you know what, it might be time to pick one up of our own instead of having to rent one or borrow one every time. Oh man, it's perfect. Perfect, Darren. How'd I do? Great. Yeah, there's our boxwoods, you guys. Oh, they're big and they're beautiful. They're winter gems. We wanted to match what was around the fireplace already. And these always have such a good structure. They don't slop under weight of rain or snow. And then I'm gonna try out three of these Taylor's Juniper. So I'm excited for that too. These stay really skinny, three feet wide by 30 feet tall. Super architectural. How do you suppose we're gonna lash these things down on that trailer? Drive real slow. You sure? Yeah. Come on, let's find Nana and Papa. Come on. They just got a new load, you guys. Tons of shrubs, ornamental grasses, perennials. It's awesome. Here's Papa. Hey. Wait. Why, Benjamin? My glasses. Can I see? Ugh. Yeah. Let me see. Looking good. Oh, stylish. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Looking good. Yeah. Okay guys, so we haven't, you know, clearly got around to building sides for this thing because we just picked it up. So we're going to try to wrap around the whole lot of plants here and then we're just gonna drive real slow. How many miles are we away from home? Yeah, like three. Maybe three miles. Yeah, so we'll see how this goes. I have brought many a precarious load home from the garden center. Thankfully, it's not, not a long trip. Yeah. 
It feels really tight. Yeah, I think it'll... It'll hold for a few miles. Because, yeah, they have to all move together. Right. Everybody say a prayer for the load. Okay, minus the little black bar that I can't get rid of. You can see that the load is riding just fine. I think we're going to make it home. All right, let's check out the load, Benjamin. Woohoo, look at that. Oh, yeah. So Benny said that they were going to be working on the concrete edging today. So I think I'll hold off setting the boxwoods out. I was kind of hoping I could show you that, kind of just set the boxwoods. Maybe I will right on the, around the arbor so we can kind of get a sense um, and a feel for that space. Uh, but I'll wait a little while, let them do their thing. I think they might be on lunch currently. So we'll go up front and get the other pots planted. Yeah. Okay, it looks like I might need to repair the drip. What's going on here? Yeah. Oh no, that's old drip, I think. Okay. This is the new drip. So we don't need to worry about this. Yeah. Okay, let's get some fertilizer for this. All right, got these all planted up. I did have to shift my plant choices kind of midway. I was so focused on the kids playing with the fountain, which is right here. They were having such a good time that I was just kind of looking that direction and I got them almost done. And I stepped back and looked and I realized that the color of geranium that Benjamin and I picked out was very jarring up against the beautiful bank of Atlas roses right here. So I pulled those out. I mean, they're beautiful. These are the Maverick uh, Violet. Started these from seed and I thought, well, they would be real pretty with the purple, which they would be on this side but you put them up against that orange and it just doesn't go. Oh my goodness. Oh. So I just popped those out and went with all the purple and blues. So two of the Superbina Sparkling Amethyst, two of the Supertunia Mini Vista Midnight, and one Play in the Blue Salvia. I think those will be really pretty, very peaceful. I mean, last year's was a mix of purples and whites as well, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I think that blend looks really pretty with the roses next to it. And these are in, well, they're beautiful right now, but they're in bloom for pretty much the whole entire season. Once they start going, they just keep on going. So, you know, this, no. <laughs> but this, yes. Just as I was finishing up planting, these FedEx showed up. In fact, I think he's still backing down the lane right now with some sweet potato slips from Johnny's, which I must have ordered this winter. I totally forgot, and I had already planted some Beauregard sweet potatoes out in the new property and I did save some room for corn for a second shift of corn but I think I'm going to run out and plant those sweet potato slips because I don't want them to go to waste. We do like sweet potatoes quite a lot. I don't think there's a tremendous amount. 25. They are the man, man yams. Yeah let's go get these in the ground quick. It's turned out to be a little bit of a random day. <laughs> I knew I had a lot of little odds and ends to finish up. Was not expecting the sweet potatoes. In fact I was going to go water the greenhouse next but I think the sweet potatoes would like to get into the ground right now. All right, here we go. So here's our first batch of corn right here and it's coming up beautifully along with some weeds. That rain sure makes everything happy. Uh, but I left from the end of the corn right here to the start of the sunflowers empty. So I'm just gonna I already did biotone all along here, so I'm just going to pop these in. It should be pretty easy. End of the corn here. I'm going to start at about 18 inches. A nice deep hole here, and I'm just going to lay them in the hole just like that. Cover them over. Now the tops will probably completely die back, and then they will kind of flush new from the roots, hopefully. Next one will go here. Okay, roughly 18 inch spacing. I'm just gonna continue on. Okay, they're all in. It was supposed to be 25. There were only 15 uh, and a couple of them are real sketch. I planted them anyway, but like this right here, I don't know. I don't know if we can expect anything much out of that one. And it only had a stem about that long. 
A few of them looked a little more promising, but this is kind of how they always look after you get done planting them. I'm going to water them in here in a minute, um, but we do have some room for corn and then I'll finish off the block right here with corn as well. I'll show you my other sweet potatoes. See these sweet potatoes? They haven't been in the ground very long, but they looked every bit as sad as the other ones that I just planted and they've rooted and they're starting to grow. I think I ended up with like 28 of this variety, the Beauregard. The potatoes are very happy, like very happy. <laughs> Look at them, oh my goodness. The peppers are also very happy. This is exciting. Look at that, already getting some production there. Tomatoes are putting on quite a lot of growth already. They were about, I don't know, less than half that size not long ago. And all but one hill of pumpkins has come up so far. I replanted the porcelain doll. Oh, and they're coming up now too, good. One little one so far. Tomato. Oh, here too, look at this. Look at these, beautiful. Okay, now I am gonna go water the greenhouse and then we might tackle a couple more pots. I also have a smoke bush that I would like to get in the ground. May only get one of those things done, we'll see. Oh, I like how these turned out, you guys. So I used, I think the last of my white geraniums that I had in the greenhouse, I used three per container. And these are the lemon pots from Unique Stone. We had them in the same spot last year, so they already had drip set up to them. And then I ringed around them with the um, strawberry, is it strawberry punch, I think, super bells. And I've always liked this one. And then this is gonna be the fun part. I tucked some floss flower in. One of you guys sent me out some seed from the gardens at Monticello. So I put these in a seed tray and I was able to grow 16 of them total um, out of the whole, I think it was a 24 count seed tray. Anyway, this is gonna be fun though, because I think, you know, they're kind of small. Most of them are on the small side. Now that they're in a larger soil reservoir and out here with a lot more, you know, direct light, I think they're gonna really start to boom. And if they do get this tall, I think that might become our centerpiece. It'll just be really interesting to see what that one does. There's one here, here, here. There's one over there on the other side, a little one right here. But I'm really liking kind of that lavender with the light pink and the white, just very soft colors. I think it's really pretty, I love it. And it's so fun that the whole centerpiece of this pot was started from seed in our greenhouse. I always start a lot of seeds to go in the cut flower garden, but I haven't really focused on starting seeds for containers. And I gotta tell you, it's fun. It might become a little bit addicting. And I do think I have time to run and grab that smoke bush that I wanna pop out into the south garden. It is quite large. I'm gonna have to make some room back here. Um, but it's a pretty one. It's a beaut. Oh my goodness, I end up with just a menagerie of stuff and toys and yeah, all kinds of business. This is the smoke bush and this is where it's gonna go, right here between the Shawnee Brave Bald Cypress and the Vanderwolf Pine. The next bit of red what we have in this space is the Nine Bark and so I need a little bit more in this area and a little bit of height back here. Uh, this variety is called Dusky Maiden. Look at how beautiful these leaves are. It grows 10 feet tall by eight feet wide. So it's not enormous. It's gonna fill this space, but it's not, there's some, I think there's some that get a little bit taller than that, like 10 to 12 feet. Um, and it's hardy to zone four. So we should have really good luck with it. And it gets these really big fluffy, you know, smoke blooms on them uh, that are kind of a pink color. So we're gonna just be filling in this space right here.
Oh my gosh, you guys, I love it. It looks so good right there. I don't think I even realized how much this area needed that color and kind of that weight until I got it in its spot. Oh, it just so is so pretty. So the eight foot width, that means it's gonna grow four feet on center. So four feet this way and four feet this way, which is quite perfect. This one gets 15 feet, so seven feet on center. So these will probably barely meet. This one has the potential of getting quite large, but I don't think it's gonna do it super fast. And knowing Aaron, he's gonna be limbing the tree up quite a lot. So I think we'll be okay uh, with the spacing here. I think it's gonna be perfect. In fact, we are planning on putting another probably green evergreen right in this space. Not a giant one, but just some other evergreen element right here. And I will always remember that this is the smoke bush that I picked up on Mother's Day. In the morning that day, my mom and I met uh, down at the garden center to shop when they were closed. It was so peaceful. We had a coffee. We just, we loaded up some carts and this was one of the things that I ended up with. So I'll always remember that. Okay, before we're done, I'm not gonna do any more projects today because I gotta do some maintenance stuff, but I want to circle back to the first containers we planted because we didn't really take a look at those close up. Uh, Benny's guys are working right now, but they're not using the compactor, so it's not super loud. Oh, it's so perfect. I love that smoke bush. I love it. Ooh, the penstemon looks good right now. Midnight masquerade right there. Beautiful. One more thing, guys. I just have to show you this. This is the I uh, Aphrodite. Is it sweet shrub? I didn't think that these would survive in our area. And I planted this last year. It survived the winter beautifully and it is blooming its head off this year. There are even little buds everywhere and just blooms open and I love them. These are more of a red, but they're kind of a smokyish red. I think they're really beautiful. They have a sweet, almost kind of like a wine smell to me. Mm. Okay, so these are gonna be interesting. They look a little wispy and a little less full than I usually plant things, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how they fill in because I think just like with the floss flower, now that they're out of those little cells, they were so root bound in there, they'd been in there too long, I think they'll really start to thicken up and fill in. And I kind of like this kind of um, airy appearance. I think it's really pretty. And then we'll see what the Joey's lamb's tail do. There's three, so there's one, two, three in that pot. You can almost not distinguish them. There's this one, there's this one here, and where's the third? Yep, right there. I don't know if they're gonna have the vigor, we'll see what happens. I really do think this is the type of container if you're gonna use an upright one, unless it's gonna be a filler flower. I think this is kind of the right style, I guess, of container. I don't know, it's just a fun experiment. And you guys, that is it for today's projects. I'm really happy with everything we got done. What is that, six? Yeah, six containers and then a smoke bush in the ground, got the greenhouse watered, got the plants for the brick patio. Uh, and because they're still working in that area, I will lay them out later and show you guys uh, kind of the direction we're going there. I think once you see the plants down, you'll really start to see the area as a whole, like how it's going to room up and, and feel cohesive, I think. I hope. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye.